Hello folks and welcome back to our playthrough of Siege of Avalon. In the last episode we discovered that the Shahul were building a ram with the purpose of taking on Avalon's walls. So now we are returning out to where uh, that ram is located and we're gonna bring it down with the power of magic. So if I remember correctly, it is in the area called uh, Village 13. Also, I've decided to uh, get rid of my little mask. And we're just going to go all the way in and wipe out any Shahul that we see here. With our stealth, we should be perfectly fine. And it's going to give us a good opportunity to earn a bunch of experience well training points all right village 13 now to take out the ram you actually have to use fire against it now there's a couple different options one of which involved going to see the alchemist fester the other one i believe is just using a fireball on it so we have plenty of those Of course, this is our never-ending supply of guys that spawn out here. And it looks like uh, Village 13 actually isn't the location that we needed. Alright, here we are. So it's Village 10, actually, that has the Shahul and the uh, workers on the big ram here. So we'll take out the workers first, get some nice little training points from all of that. Then we'll equip fireball and set it on fire. Let's see. With stealth and daring, I have just reduced the Shahul Battering Ram to an ashy ruin. The speed at which it burned seemed to indicate that it was enchanted, as I had suspected when I first laid eyes upon it. I thank the good spirits that Avalon's walls will never have to endure the devastation such a siege machine would inflict. It was most satisfying to watch the ram burn, especially after our forces have suffered so much under the fires of shaman ma mages. I cannot help but wonder what the enemy must make of this event given the reverence they place on fire. Perhaps this will somehow weaken the fanatical zeal that drives our enemies. At the least, this, fa this act of sabotage within their own camp should cause a general lowering of their morale. I hope Madam will be pleased with my success. All right, so with that, we're gonna return back to Avalon. And I think that's probably going to be it for this chapter. And we'll move on to uh, chapter 5, which is the mage-focused chapter. Also taking a moment to look, uh, our current training points are 103. Uh, so we have a good amount of room to learn various spells in that that I believe should be available in chapter 5. Uh, can't quite remember what spells are still out there to learn. I know eventually there's a way to get larger, like, fireballs and frostballs and that sort of thing. I don't remember if that is done by increasing mysticism or if that was actually a separate spell from the normal frost and fireball. Oh, there's Madam. I was like, where did he go? Welcome back. Have you something to report? I have destroyed the Shahul War Machine. Excellent news. I knew it wouldn't be a problem for you. Ha! Huh. Have you anything else to report? Not at the moment. I will shall return when I have something more. What else is there? I don't think there's anything else. 
Well, I guess... Return to Sir Roth? That would be my guess. Who's this wily guy over here? Have I talked to him? Uh, oh, I think I've talked to him before. He's the Fornaxen guy that ended up becoming a warrior. And the Fornaxens are the mage people. It is good to see you again, Anubis. Thank you. Do you know anything about the Naga? I have seen one in the field, probably their version of a scout. They are at least moderately intelligent creatures, but their origins are unknown. It is rumored by some that they are magical creatures, created by some mage and unfortunately given power of reproduction. For the most part, they keep to themselves. I am alarmed by Madam's reports of Naga so close to us. Do you think they will threaten Avalon? They seem to be allied with the Shahul. It's anyone's guess. Perhaps they are enemies or allies of the Lizardmen. Because considering there's still a wall between us, I don't think we should worry about it over much. Regardless, we will be watching them carefully. Have you any other, any other questions? Not at the moment, farewell. Alright. Um. Pardon me, Sir Roth, I must have had a spasm. I'm not gonna say... Let's check with page intro. Anubis, Ambassador Joffred requests your presence, if you haven't spoken to him yet. And he just happens to standing a few steps south from us now. I'm not sure what it's about, he didn't offer details, and it would have been imp impudent of me to request them. Oh, have you spoken with Madame yet? Yes, of course. He's given me a few assignments, and you know, he wasn't in nearly as much a hurry as you had let on. Yes, well, you see, the more quickly someone responds to my summons, the better it looks for me. In my future, right? <clears throat> I apologize for that little bit of treachery. So, what does old Mudum have you doing? A little cloak and dagger, eh? A little bit of stab and run? Well, I suppose that since Sir Roth trusts you... Oh, well... Nah, we'll just say just some routine scouting, really. Nothing to get worked up, worked up about. But something to keep hush-hush about, eh? That's alright. I won't pry. I'll hear about it eventually anyways. You may wish to ask me later. Now, if you will excuse me, certainly, sir. I wish you luck on your latest endeavor. Well, he sent me down to this ambassador here, but I've already taken care of his issue. Uh, let's see. You are very special, Anubis. Very special indeed. I think I've gone over this in the previous episode. So that's taken care of. I've already done all of this. Well, is talking to Sir Roth the next quest? That takes me to chapter 5? I don't quite remember. Let's see then. So, we tell Roth that we've completed our assignments and ready for a new assignment. As a matter of fact, I have a rather distasteful assignment for you, but it is mine to give. And I believe you will see that it is for the best. Simply put, Overon must be eliminated. Yes, I am ordering you to assassinate him. He is not who I thought I knew him to be. You know what he is guilty of. Yes, I do, Sir Roth. But are you sure now is the best time? Yes, I am sure. You have recently caused quite an uproar in the Shahul camp. They are at a disadvantage with all the chaos you have produced in their midst. I am sure this is the time and there is no one around, or no one out there, more qualified than you are. Avalon needs this. If Overon is allowed to continue his scheming, he will be invaluable to the Shahul. With their numbers and Overon's knowledge of warfare, I understand, Sir General Roth. Excellent. Let me know when you are finished. Since taking the detestable man's head out of the camp would certainly cause problems, bring his sword to me. A fitting end for a traitor warrior, to be denied the rights of being buried with his sword. Make sure you leave room to carry it, because it is one of the largest swords Tempest has ever touched. I will see you when you are finished then, Anubis. As you wish, I will return when I and he are finished. 
All right, so this is actually, if I recall correctly, still part of chapter, uh, still part of chapter four. So we get to return and take out Overon. So let's head on out. I think I should still be able to get to Overon's camp without the mask. We'll save just to be sure, but... And then it's just a matter of hitting him with some well-placed arrows. Yeah, if I recall correctly from the guide that I had, um, when it comes to taking down Overon, you actually have to complete the various missions, then go to talk to Sir Roth. Because if you attack him before this, Overon is still pretty much mortal or invincible or whatever, so he doesn't die. But once you talk to Sir Roth like we just did, then that kind of unlocks Overon to be killed, so. And we see Overon right there. Take out his warlords around him. And one vital hit, and Overon is gone. Uh, looking at his stuff, he really doesn't have anything useful. He has a fine crafted longsword. But, uh, yeah, his other stuff is rather disappointing looking. Yeah, the only thing that he has that we don't already have is the dark chainmail. So we'll grab that. But uh, beyond that, I think we'll probably be set. And actually, the black studded leather tunic is about as good, if not better, than the dark chainmail. So we'll grab the dark chainmail, just as something to maybe sell. Although we could equip it in our tunic slot. We'll do that. But everything else that he had was pretty much useless. I don't think killing any of these guys gives us anything. Nope. Alright, so we are returning to Sir Roth here. We'll let him know that Overon is gone. I bring good news, Sir Roth. I have dispatched the traitor Overon and have returned with his sword. That is indeed good news, Anubis. I am relieved. And as for you, I think you've earned yourself a rest. You may keep Overon's sword if it pleases you to do so. For the time being, I have nothing more for you. But with our recent development, I can tell much will be happening very soon. You may wish to tell Mudum the good news as well. I'm sure it will take a few wrinkles off his face. Dismissed. Farewell for now, Sir Roth. Alright, uh, does Entrao have anything for us? Hail Anubis, I have a message to deliver for you. Elazar wishes to speak with you when you next have the opportunity. As usual, I wasn't given any details, but I would bet he has your next assignment. When you're finished with him, whether you accept his assignment or not, return to me, for I may have another assignment for you by that time. Alright, so this is the one that we've been working up to. Uh, since we started out on the mage path, this is going to be what sort of gives us kind of like a promotion, even though our character doesn't really go for promotions. But uh, either way, it's going to be useful. So, uh, Also, one thing that I want to check out real quick, I'll actually return to the Outer Bailey. I want to see if Olin takes back the Magical Mask, or if he really doesn't have any use for it. Since in the conversation with Olin and one of the previous episodes kind of made it seem like he was making his own separate mask. 
apparently we're just passing through, so never mind. He doesn't have any use for the mask. And really neither do we, so we'll put the mask away. Then we'll go see Elazar. Alright, Elazar, I return to you. Anubis, right on time. I have an assignment for you, one that couldn't fit you better, as a practitioner of the Mystic Arts. You now have an opportunity to again assist the esteemed mages of Avalon. You may have heard that Elrath has been doing some research on an ancient portal that was discovered beneath the fortress. I need your help in bringing this portal to operation. Since now, Elrath and I believe we know how it can be done. What are the details of this portal, and what is required to make it work? Through multiple enchantments, Elrath has managed to be able to place the area the portal will teleport to. It is a recent breakthrough that we are able to put anything through it at all. For quite some time, we thought the portal was merely eating everything we tried to pass through it. But I think it's more likely that it is more likely that the portal transported everything we sent to where it originally led ages ago. So what's the problem? If the portal works, what more do you need? The portal does not work as it should. Everything it transports end up terribly mangled, and we cannot possibly put a living creature through such a thing. However, if I remember possessing a ring that protects against polymorphing, if Elrath can transform the enchantment from the ring, transfer the enchantment from the ring to the portal, it's been done before after all, then the portal should function correctly. Should? That's not much of an endorsement. We shall test it, of course, but I am making no guarantees. We shall pass a few more pieces of furniture through the portal. Once we are satisfied that the ring's enchantment has been, uh, taken hold and is affecting the portal, we shall send some rats. They shouldn't be hard to find through it as well. It will be safe, or it will not be used. And what is it you wish me to do? I need you to go back to my tower and retrieve the ring from a chest in my chambers on the third floor. You need not worry about any defense mechanisms. Although I have a few, they have not been triggered. Additionally, their nature is specific and almost intelligent, meaning that you cannot set them off. I cannot stress enough the importance of this item. Should Avalon fall, think of all the lives lost if we do not. Why think of those to die? Think instead of the lives saved if the portal works when we should need it. That is certainly a more invigorating thought, Nubis. Yes. An unusually wise comment. Say hello to my big book when you arrive at my tower. You'll know the one. And tell it to reference entries 491 and 7, bleh, 673 of my log for you. Farewell. I shall see you after you finish. May the good spirits protect you. I am confident in my abilities and shall succeed, Elazar. You shall have your opportunity to complete the portal. I am confident in your abilities as well. It is merely customary to wish someone good luck. I was attempting to be courteous. In that case, I apologize, Seer, but there is one more question I must ask. Of course. I forgot to tell you how you are supposed to get in how you are supposed to get into my tower, since that has been sealed. There is a tree immediately outside my tower with a magical spell set to trigger when someone touches a branch on it. It is difficult to identify, but I have no doubt you will manage it. Thank you, Elazar. I will return with your ring. Alright, so we're going to run out back to the village. If I remember correctly, I think Elazar's tower is that big... Um, that big sort of rock formation that you encounter like when you first go out to the village. If I'm remembering correctly. So let's go back out. It's daytime now. But we still shouldn't have too many issues. And eventually I'll probably pick up some more companions. But for the moment, I think we'll be pretty pretty well set. Ah! 
especially with our high stealth. It's uh, pretty much guaranteed that none of these guys are going to be much of a threat to us. Oh dear. I think we may have found something that's going on. When I arrived at Elazar's tower today, I was shocked by what I saw. Apparently, the shaman, by whatever means, have discovered that the tower is worthy of their interest. Intent on plundering whatever artifacts remained after the village was abandoned, they were attempting to knock out the barricade sealing the entrance. What is most disturbing about this discovery, however, is that they have chosen this exact moment to attempt to gain entry to the tower, as though they knew that the defenders of Avalon needed something within it. Perhaps I have underestimated the shaman. They appear to have some precognitive powers, and I shall have to expect spirited resistance such as this in the future. Also a neat little uh, thing showing the shaman using their powers and all that. Also a random skeleton just sort of standing there. Ooh, gauntlets of coordination. Big boost to coordination, reduces restriction. They're nice, but at the same time, I don't know if I necessarily really need them. Anyways, uh, we are at the tower, and it looks like this is the branch that we need to do. And it's open. So let's save before we go on in. Just in case there's something bad in here. Spectral guardians. Any, aw, oh, they don't have any loot. Well, at least I can kill them for uh, training points. If I can hit them. Okay, so this Tome of the Burning Pit, bound within a charred cover, this eccentric tome is warm to the touch and smells of smoke. The text inside appears to have been drafted in charcoal. An ominous golden skull plate is sewn into the cover, adding to the bizarre appearance. The inscriptions inside greatly increase one's ability to cast Fireball. So I think if I equip that, it gives me a nice boost to my Fireball then. Oh yeah, it went from around 44 to 68 damage. Hey, the book. Light Librius. Don't even think about touching me. At least I know Elazar hasn't lost his mind. He told me of a book he wished for me to have a few words with. Then again... I have noted your claim. There have been visitors in the past, but none have ever made it to me. Certainly you have undone the defenses. Yes, they must be muddled and fading mess. Be a muddled and fading mess, I sense. Oh, the muddled and fading mess that I sense out of the corner of my pages. I have noted. Perhaps you were sent by Elazar, and perhaps not. The pages hold the answer. If Elazar has sent you, what has he told you of me? For uh, that he wished you to reference entries 491 and 673. 
Good answer. Halazar apparently wishes for you to have a book, one designed to augment the popular flame spell by increasing its energy output. It is a useful tool for novices, but it must be carried in order for its magic to function. Experienced sorcerers such as Elazar have little use for such, as they have already created their own spells attuned to their strengths. Ah yes, I remember seeing the book in question. Yes, it was on a bookshelf in this room, last it was noted. In addition, I am to answer your questions to the best of my ability, but my area of expertise is but magic written on my pages. Before you ask, I have a title. It is Librius, and yes, I am aware that something else entirely is written on my exterior. Would you like to ask any questions? Uh, let's see. None of the other books in this tower are as endowed as you, are they? None of them possess the capacity for communication outside of the text of their pages. Does that answer your question? I suppose so. Thank you and for well. Well, I guess that's about it. Uh, there's another book over here. Little can be made out of this crumbling tome save for the mystical symbol for confusion. Interesting. Don't think it really does anything for me, though, so. All right, checking around here. Not seeing any other books or anything that I can pick up. Oh, there's a chest here, though. Ebony Warlock Hood. This garment is made from crushed velvet and leather. It has been styled to cover the entire head and droop down over the top of the face. It is lined with ancient symbols along the white tapered hem. So only adds a little to restriction and has various little uh, modifiers. Let's see, how does it look? Mm, doesn't look too bad. Let's save where we are as we head deeper in. Oh dear. No! No! Oh dear. This could be interesting then. Uh, let's heal. Be ready to cast shadow, although it may not save us here. Got it. And that one. Oh dear, oh dear, need a heal, need a heal. Ow, ow, ow. Aw, oh, you bastard. You got me. Okay, let's try this again. So we got that one there. I got this guy here. Anyone else? I think that's it. So this chest has a ring of form protection, which is the thing that we need for the portal. And a cloak of frozen dawn. Adds to coordination, mana, perception, and it has some nice restrictions to cold. So that makes a much better cloak than that little open black one, so. Took out all of their little monsters that are around here. Anything in the bookshelves? The largely indecipherable, the magical symbol for mana can be determined on this scroll, as well as a common ancient symbol for stealing. Really? I wonder. If I equip that, does that... Nope, nope. I'm wondering if maybe I should actually grab these things these other scrolls that are around here. 
because they may actually give me something useful. Hands of the Undying Revenant. What does that do for me? Strength reduces coordination. Mysticism, stealth, hurts perception, charm, and the healing wet, healing rate. Mm, it has some basic protections to magic and cold. I'll take it, but I, I don't know if I'll make any use out of it. Also, this dead, this burned Naga corpse. Oh! Had a spectral guardian that was still alive. Well, not anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go grab that other scroll that was up here. The one that had the symbol for confusion. And then we'll return to uh, Elazar. Alright, Elazar, where did you go? I hate when they end up hiding all around here. Oh, uh-oh. Callum says, Anubis, Elazar is taken ill and is abed in the infirmary. I don't know if you'll be able to speak to him. I do not know the severity of his condition, but for as frail as he appears, I do not recall him ever taking ill before. Thank you, Callum. I am sure Elrath can continue our project without Elazar. Farewell. Well, that's not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. So I guess I gotta bring it to Elrath. So first we'll check in the infirmary. See if we see anything on Elazar here. There's lots of bodies, but I don't see anything in particular. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess we don't really have anything going with Elrath here. Oh, maybe this guy? Oh, this is an old quest. <laughs> so Brother Mo wants me to find an herb to heal a fever, but I've actually found that herb already. I think I have it in here still somewhere. Somewhere around here. There it is. Okay, we'll bring this to Brother Mo, and then we'll return to Elrath. I can't believe I missed that quest. It's been like, you know, weeks now. Yes, brother, use them well, lad. Thank you, okay. So I think that's where you're supposed to get the knowledge to use that for Corvus. Um, but yeah, I, I completely missed that little quest. Oops. Elrath. Good day, Anubis. It is good to see that you are well. I have retrieved a ring from Elazar's tower for use on the portal, but Elazar has gone. Or wait, no. Oh, well, I have a few scrolls I'd like you to look at, Elrath. I can't make any sense of them, and I was hoping that you could. Of course, what would you like me to look at? The Confused Man, the Forget Spell, which causes momentary confusion in your enemies, and is especially effective against spellcasters. Uh, of course, I'd like to learn it. There was another one. 
Uh, let's see, Mana Thief will suck mana out of the area and will give a portion of it to you. If you have the time, you can be taught it by the scroll. Sure. Yay, I got a couple new spells now. So I have Mana Thief here. And forget. Cause of this target to forget for five seconds. I'm assuming forget is pretty much like a silence spell from other role-playing games, so. Anyways, I have Elazar's ring, but I don't know where he is. Even though I know where he is. Suppose you'll be answering to me from now on, Anubis, for Sherard tells me that Elazar is taken ill. He has probably been fretting too much over our work. It is good for him to rest now. He never took the time to master the more complicated enchantments. And I will only need Sherard's help to complete what I am doing. Uh, let's see. I see. Since you are the one who will be doing the work, I shall leave the ring in your possession. Thank you so much, Anubis. Before I forget to mention it, Pell would like to see you. She seems rather troubled. Is there anything else? No, I shall check on Pell presently. Alright, folks. Well, I guess uh, we're being sent to Pell. But I think we're going to end it here for today. We finished up chapter 4, took out the battering ram, then went out and uh, assassinated Overon. So we made some good progress here. So I will see you all next time. So thanks for watching.